Howdy, my name is Jacob Carroll and I'm here before the Cricket Australia and the Australian Cricketers Association uh, in the hopes of mediating their two issues and proposing a solution uh, that is beneficial for both parties. So let's dive into what the problem was. Um, the problem arose uh, in March of 2018 when Australia was playing uh, South Africa and Cape Town, um, and in this cricket match, one of the bowlers for Australia um, was caught illegally tampering with the ball, um, and he did this by with sandpaper that he hid in his trousers, um, and that allowed um, him to you know get more action on the ball um, and, and make it harder for the opposing team to hit, and so. Um, it, it became known later uh, after the game uh, in, a, in a conference that um, Cameron Bancroft, uh, the pitcher, was not the o or the bowler, excuse me, was not the only one um, involved in this tampering. But it was also uh, the team captain, Steve Smith, um, and it became later known that also the vice captain, uh, David Warner, that all three of them really were um, a party um, in in this. E unethical and um, activity that uh, really tarnished the name of a cricket in Australia. Uh, up to that point, um, Australia really had, been, had uh, benefited from a, a really pristine image in the public eye. Uh, they, they had players who had historically really taken firm stances. Um, even, even some of the players involved in the scandal um, had previously taken very firm stances and advocated for the rules of cricket. And so this really hurt the public image of Australia. So um, in response, the Cricket Australia governing body, this is a body that governed uh, um, cricket in Australia, um, they responded by placing heavy, sanction, heavy penalties on the three players. Uh, these penalties were a 12-month ban from the sport, um, internationally and within Australia um, on uh, David Warner, who was found to kind of be the mastermind behind it all, um, and then a nine-month ban on Bancroft and Steve, um, uh, it, again, internationally and within Australia as well. So we, f we saw these just really, you know, hammer-heavy, um, top-down sentences on these players that the cricketers are that the Australian Cricketers Association, which is the union that represented the cricket players in Australia, um, felt was just way too severe. And so we've got these two um, kind of clashing ideologies as to how to properly punish these uh, three cricket players. Um, and ultimately, both parties involved want to see justice. Um, none of, neither of them are arguing for, for them to have a free ride or to get off um, without punishment, but it's just a difference as to how much punishment there should be. Um, and so what we've got here is that they share mutual interest to preserve the sport of cricket. Right? Neither one of them are going to say that they should get off free because then that would encourage other cricket players to cheat. Um, so they both want punishment. They both want justice. Um, and, and really both want to preserve the image of cricket in this country of Australia. Um, so, so it really is um, kind of a beneficial situation to step into because it's not two opposing parties. It's not a win-lose situation. It is hopefully going to create a win-win scenario where cricket in Australia is preserved and these players' reputations and careers um, are not damaged beyond repair. Um, and so really my, my proposition as far as communication between these two parties would be um, both communication privately um, in meetings, um, developing, hashing out how uh, to properly punish these players, but also um, outwardly to the media, to the, to the international community of cricket, um, that they view this as unjust, as immoral, um, and as deserving of punishment. Um, so that way, the world isn't confused as to what Australia's heart behind this is, right? Because um, Australia, again, wants to preserve their identity. Um, so I propose that they are just forthright with the media and, and just communicating the message of, hey, this is not okay, and we're working for the best solution to punish our, um, our players. Um, and so what we really have here is integrative bargaining. Um, both parties with, with a shared mutual interest coming together, seeking the best solution. 
Um, and so, so factors that really need uh, to be managed and resolved during this, um, right? We want to keep the players in mind during this entire time, right? These, these three guys, yes, they messed up. Yes, what they did was wrong. Um, but they have, after the fact, come out and said, hey, I, right? Like Cameron Bancroft, after the game in a conference, immediately following said, yes, I, I cheated. Um, and, and Steve Smith was with him. And so uh, we want to keep them in mind. We don't want to make it impossible um, for, for, um, uh, for them to come back, right? We don't want to just punish them forever. Uh, we also want to keep, again, in mind the, the sentiment in Australia because a lot of people were upset about that. But also um, I, I would argue to say that a lot of people in Australia don't want to see some of their top players be punished forever. Um, and, and lastly, some another party to consider is the international community, um, ensuring that the players involved receive proper justice um, and that everything is communicated well. Uh, so I hope that um, this uh, talk helps, and I hope that we can come to a solution.